Another day and another remaster washes up on our shores. This time around it's Need for Speed Hot Pursuit the Remastered Edition, which has landed almost a decade from its original release with a few tweaks and optimizations to the game. Having been a bit of a Need for Speed Underground 2 fanboy growing up, I wasn't overly taken with it upon its initial release, mainly down to the lack of customization. The Nintendo Switch, however, doesn't have a great deal of races, so sinking some real time into it and going over the frame rates, performance, and any changes in this version, I'm hoping to discover if this is the Audi R8 or the Aldi. Oh, right, let's find out. Don't, do Don't expect anything in the way of story. Unlike the aforementioned underground, Hot Pursuit sought to strip away any narrative distractions and put the emphasis well and truly back on the racing. In terms of the gameplay then, it's split into several different areas. There's the main career mode, with the remastered edition seeing many of the DLC additions such as the Lamborghini Untamed and Porsche Unleashed being included within the campaign rather than as separate additions. There is a multiplayer mode which allows you to join up to eight other players and again in the remastered edition we have cross-platform support. Career mode is split into two distinct segments. On the one hand you'll be tearing through the streets in high performance vehicles like those chavs who hang out in the back of Tesco's and on the other you get to play as the police. Unlike the earliest racing titles where officially licensed cars were never damaged, this was one of the first to allow you to smash them to pieces. You'll find high performance vehicles from Porsche, Audi, BMW, and even the classic Aston Martin. And seeing these decked out in the black and white of an American patrol car really was quite cool. All of the racetracks are set within the fictional Seacrest County, which was supposedly based on South California, Arizona, and Colorado. Essentially, it allows for almost every different environment. You can race in the snow, down by rivers, or through winding mountains, and even into the city. Track designs are varied, and there are lots of them. When they create created the game, they actually built an entire open world track of sorts and then the race courses are overlaid onto those. This is particularly useful as when you're racing it has a feeling that these aren't confined spaces, with multiple shortcuts to find, some of them being marked on your minimap and others for you to discover, and these can massively change how a race plays out. While it has that very familiar criterion feel, it's a little bit different to Burnout, which is on Switch. There's still an emphasis on drifting around corners to gain Nitro, but it doesn't handle quite the same, feeling a touch less arcadey, and with each of the different vehicles having different weightings. But then you'll also find a number of weapons, such as the Spike Trap, which can be the perfect deterrent when the police are getting a little bit too friendly, or the EMPs to temporarily disable another opponent, the police intercept chopper, or a good old fashioned roadblock. It was actually really refreshing to jump into a racing game that had no nonsense in it. There are no flashing lights, bells, whistles, or anything really to distract the player from just jumping into a race and racing. Your high scores and the amount of attempts you've made will be logged down the bottom of the screen. And regardless of which platform you're playing on or your friends, these cross over so you can see their times. While I think every game has a certain amount of rubber banding, Hot Pursuit doesn't feel like you can't escape the people chasing you, particularly if you make good use of shortcuts and side avenues. There are numerous cars that fall into different speed categories, and if there's one thing Need for Speed Hot Pursuit certainly does well, it's providing that exhilarating, blisteringly fast racing experience that you come to expect from Criterion. And just the racing alone was more than enjoyable enough and when you factored in the other game modes and being able to take out other drivers and strategically using the different weapons at your disposal, it took the game to a new level and has certainly quietened if not silenced my acne covered Need for Speed underground playing self. Where the experience shines the most though is when you play online. Finding a quick match is relatively simple, although there weren't a huge number of players online, it does have cross-platform play, and it took me around 5-10 to 10 minutes to get a really good lobby to get down to some classic Hot Pursuit action. By its very nature, having human intelligence behind the wheel just makes for such an interesting and more enjoyable experience. And with the cops targeting one of you and the other having to defend against using radar jammers or your own spike traps, personally, it's the most fun I've had so far in a racer on the Nintendo Switch. And I didn't experience any network latency or other connection issues it all worked well. One potential weakness to this instalment that's really going to depend on your playstyle is the lack of any upgrades. This applies to not only performance ones but also visually. 
You can change the color and create a custom color like your uh, switch channel colors. But other than that, you get what you're given. That being said, you unlock cars so frequently through the quite generous bounty system with a gold, silver or bronze challenge for each stage. And my main takeaway from the game has been one of no nonsense and enjoyable fun racing both off and online. I love the racing gameplay here and it scores 18 out of 20. With the controls being equally good, however, a lack of analog triggers on the Nintendo Switch always makes me grit my teeth a little, despite this being a more arcadey racer. I give controls 16 out of 20. And we hear the word remastered quite often. In terms of how the game looks, well, it's not the biggest remaster I've ever seen. However, and doffing my cap to the developers, it's running at native resolution in both docked and handheld at a completely locked out 30 FPS. It has a higher resolution on many of the car models than the original versions, as well as including some more objects and a longer draw distance. They have upped the resolution on shadows and improved some of the cutscene videos. One other notable addition is the photo mode, which in all fairness does look pretty damn tasty. I didn't think I'd be saying it, but EA have done more than I expected and more than I've seen in quite a few other ports recently on the Nintendo Switch. It looks great, it's running smoothly, and while yes, if you stuck it side by side with Dirt 5 or another modern racer, it's gonna pale in comparison, you've gotta give them credit, particularly when it's performing at native in both docked and handheld, with the latter really shining on that small crisp screen. As far as audio goes, Hot Pursuit has one of the best soundtracks in any racing game, full stop. For me, I still really loved what was here. I love the sound effects, the crunching as you smash into another car, and those visuals hold up nicely in both docked and handheld. Despite a touch of aliasing around the edges of some objects, overall I think they're decent, and I give visuals 17 out of 20. And despite having a few audio glitches in one stage and then never having it again, for the rest of my playtime, audio was flawless and the soundtrack decent. I give music and audio 18 out of 20. In terms of value then, the game retails at £34.99 or your regional equivalent, and I actually don't think that's too bad. Yes, it's an older title that's seen a remaster, but it's only recently released on other platforms, and it's holding up really well on the Switch. The online is excellent, and the cross-platform a nice added touch. It's got a reasonable download size of 7 gigs and a campaign that's going to take you around about 15 to 20 hours and then you've got all the extras and replaying races. You're easily going to spend double that, if not more, trying to get golds everywhere and beat high scores. Factor in online and, well, you're going to be set. And I was fully expecting a £49.99 price tag like the first ridiculously overpriced Need for Speed offering on Switch. So £34.99, the same as the other consoles, I guess is an improvement. I give value 16 out of 20. Overall then, for me at least, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit has been a really pleasant experience and it scores an overall switch up score of 85%. Let me know down in the comments, will you be picking this one up? Do you like this series? Would you also like to see Need for Speed Underground and Underground 2? come over to the Nintendo Switch. Subscribe if you enjoy the channel. If you don't, then don't. Big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!